ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ವ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ವ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರಾವನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರಾವನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಗೋಪಿನಾಥ ರಾಧ ಗೋಪಿನಾಥ ರಾಧೇ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ ಪಿತಾಯಿ ಗೌರ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಗೋಪಿನಾಥ್ ಲಲಿತಾ ವಿಶಾಖಾ ದೇವಿ ಕೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ್ನಿಥಾಯಿ ಕೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಿರಿಧಾರಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ್ ಕೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಜನಾರ್ದನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನವಲ್ಲ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಕೀ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಕೀ ಗ್ರಂಥರಾಜ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕೀ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಎಲೆವೆಂತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟು entitled elements of material creation text number 32 evam tvagadi shravanaadi chakshu jivvaadi nasaadi cha chitta yuktam evam tvagadi shravanaadi chakshur ಜಿವ್ವಾದಿ ನಾಸಾದಿ ಚ ಚಿತ್ತಯುಕ್ತ ತ್ವಗಾದಿ ಶ್ರವಣಾದಿ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ 
జివ్వాదినాసాది చిత్తయుక్తం మతజీస్ ఏం ఇన్ ద సేమ్ వే త్వగాది ద స్కిన్ ద సెన్సేషన్ ఆఫ్ టచ్ అండ్ ద డెమి గాడ్ ఆఫ్ ద విండ్ వాయు శ్రవణాది ద ఇయర్స్ the sensation of the sound and the demigods of the directions chakshuhu the eyes described in the previous verse jivvadi the tongue the sensation of the taste and the god of water varuna nasadi the nose the sensation of smell and the ashwini kumaras cha also chitta yuktam along with consciousness implying not only conditioned consciousness together with the object of that consciousness and the presiding deity vasudev but also the mind together with the object of thought and moon god chandra intelligence with the object of intelligence and lord brahma and the false of ego together with identification of false ego and lord rudra translation similarly the sense organs namely skin ears eyes tongue and nose as well as the functions of the subtle body namely the conditioned consciousness mind intelligence and false ego can all be analyzed in terms of the threefold distinctions that is sense object of perception and the presiding deity purport the individual soul has no permanent relationship with the interdependent material functions of the senses sense objects and controlling deities again i will read the individual soul has no permanent relationship with the interdependent material functions of the senses the sense objects and controlling deities the living entity is originally pure spirit soul and is meant to depend on the personality of godhead in the spiritual world it is useless to try to analyze matter and spirit within the same categories since they are belonging to different potencies of the supreme lord thus the act of spiritually perceiving the supreme lord his abode and one's own self is entirely anti material process realized within pure krishna consciousness ko samajh mein aaya kya thus the act of spiritually perceiving supreme lord the act of perceiving is abode and the act of perceiving his own self a uh, one's own self is entirely anti material process that means spiritual process realized within pure krishna consciousness hari krishna om ajnana timirandhasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri guruve namaha శ్రీ చైతన్యమనోవిష్టం స్థాపితం ఏ నూతలే 
स्वयं रूप कदाम ददाति स्वदाक श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग ऑन संडे मॉर्निंग फॉर हियरिंग स्मृत भागवतम लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज टॉकिंग टू उद्धव एंड एनालाइजिंग ऑल द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ मटीरियल क्रिएशन सो द each each sense that we have we have skin we have nose so each each sense the five senses and the three subtle senses all of them have understanding on three different platforms that is the sense itself then its object and there is a dt which controls that activity of that sense and this is true for everything see so beautifully explained in the translation itself even the false ego has the dt that is lord rudra and there is identification of false ego which another activity in itself the false ego itself then we see the intelligence subtle subtle body it also there is intelligence and there is a object of intelligence and there is the dt of intelligence that is lord brahma so like that each and every single thing that we have is being controlled by one particular deity that is demigod and there are objects like when we see the object that is suppose you is the object my eye is the sense and there is a deity which is controlling that activity of seeing and perceiving the object on your retina on your drishti patala So then we analyze further. Oh, this is my god brother, or this is a tree, or this is a garden, or this is a fruit, or this is a tree. So there is such a beautiful arrangement. And if we analyze the uh, arrangement of the Lord, then all our scientific efforts appear to be very puny, where there is so much subtle and so much deep analysis is there in the creation itself. and all all of it is very subtly and neatly bound by the observation of karma and when i see a particular object i may get agitated with sensual desires or i may appreciate it as a poet or i may appreciate the beauty of the lord's creation there are so many things and depending on the way i think about what i see a karma is created and there is some other demigods they are waiting to write it down what is happening and as per the nature of the karma the reaction is given there is also another faculty there to give the reaction of your karma and with the reaction of karma there is a feeling of happiness or dejection because when we do karma we get good results or bad results when we get good results we are happy and we are pushed to perform that same karma again and when we are having bad rea- reaction then we suffer and sometimes because of compulsive obsessive habits we continue doing same thing and then there is a perpetual cycle of repeated birth and death due to all these things which are so meticulously organized by the external energy of the lord please do not think these things are organized by krishna himself or internal energy of the lord today is durga ashtami ha huh? eighth day of eighth day of whatever today is durga ashtami the day of goddess durga devi we also chanted sit srishti sthiti pralaya sadhana shakti deka she is external energy of the lord and under her domain all these things are functional she may not be uh, superior to all the presiding deities like lord brahma is the highest devi god but still it is her area under which everybody functions so nicely meticulously 
and this is how our life in material world goes on it is very complicated in one sense and most of the times it is automatic we don't even know that i am watching a object this is my sense this is my object and this is my interaction with the object and this is what i am going to think now it's just automatic i see you and i have a feeling of of appreciation or repulsion i see another thing i have attraction or rejection and accordingly i even if the plate comes of prasadam if there is something unwanted item there is immediate reaction there is a wanted item immediate reaction is there it so happens so naturally but these are all uh, analytically organized by the external energy of the lord personified as durga devi and all this is only material world please understand every single thing what we are what is analyzed over here is all in the material world because all it all of these five senses and three subtle senses are the part of our material body only beyond that is consciousness which is covered by this external covering of 5 plus 3 and beyond that is the soul and soul is actually independent of all these things it is also mentioned here clearly in purport that there is no relationship with what the soul is and what's happening over here it's like our uh, position in the jail is not natural for us we have nothing to do with the jail but somehow because of some desire that we have and some activity that we have done it has resulted us to be in jail but being in jail and doing those activities of jail that is breaking stones or getting punished is not natural to us we are independent of that we are totally different and the day we realize oh i don't belong here and i start asking question where do i belong i want to go there and we get knowledge this is how you get out and one day we get out and there's a process in between while we are inside till the time we get out there is a process which is to be sincerely followed and then we go out and explore what is natural and what is our self and what is our natural activity this is all the spiritual life is all about that now we are in the jail we have analyzed why we are in jail what is the cause behind i hope everybody knows that we have rebelled against krishna we wanted to enjoy independent of krishna that is why we got this body when we got this body there are five senses the three subtle senses and we acted upon that according to the body that we have been given gross senses and subtle senses they have impelled us to some activity and then we have created karma and the reaction of karma and we are bound in the chain of reactions and actions of karma and that's why we are here and somehow it looks to be uh a long eternal time bound situation <laughs> it is going on where is the end we don't know where is the beginning also we don't know and most unfortunate moment all this started and now where it is going to lead us we don't know but in between comes a devotee of the lord who is very merciful and has woken us up and has told us my dear friend this is all illusion this is all not you it doesn't belong to you it is not it is not befitting you we are we are in a natural situation please come out so first there is realization yes yes this is unnatural and second thing is yes now how do i come out then the hand is given to us and we are led to the beautiful world of spiritual life so we can go on analyzing and it's good to know also but the goal is not to only understand this analysis and dwell in that <laughs> that is not the goal the goal is to understand the purpose behind this analysis if i analyze that this particular chemical is poison to me so we are what we expected that we will not take that poison i will not deal with it in a very close physical manner so that knowledge of analysis of that chemical to be a poison should lead us naturally should lead us to an understanding that i don't have to do anything with this this is not good for me never ever i will come across it like if you come to know a uh, marketed drink aerated drink has got certain number of pesticides so wow, wonderful I, i came to know about it but i still keep drinking it 
that is not intelligence so when i understand that a particular marketed drink has got so much of pesticides it may be in the inverted commas or permissible kind of thing but it's still pesticide it's a poison so when i come to know i came to know in 2003 and i stopped it until today i don't drink it no marketed drink so that is what is supposed to be the ex is a is expected from us we just go on, don't go on, we just go on, don't go on analyzing analyzing and analyzing then what happens one day we get paralyzed <laughs> there's so much of analysis and we don't know what to do with the analysis and the result of analysis so to process the realization of a particular analysis we need spiritual guidance we need some spiritual authority who will properly channelize our realizations and understandings of the various analysis that we are doing in this material world and that is what is called as shiksha guru and diksha guru so when we uh, are given some understanding of knowledge from scriptures or some philosophical understanding then we are also guided by the spiritual authority to act upon it to deal with it positively negatively favorably unfavorably and that is what is spiritual life if these complicated words of philosophy are not understood doesn't matter just we have to understand one thing that i am suffering here is that easy to difficult to understand anybody has difficulty in understanding because everybody is suffering so it is easy to relate to this fact that i am suffering and the second thing what we need to know with zero intelligence is i need to not, i don't need to suffer i don't want to suffer i want to get out of the suffering natural feeling so the third thing is to approach an person who has understanding how to get out of the suffering and then start working on it and what we when you start working on it it is spiritual life so it is very wonderful statement mentioned here ki the act of a spiritual spiritually perceiving the supreme lord his abode and one soul self is entirely spiritual process it has got nothing to do with analyzing the intelligence and the sense and the object and the deity and who is who and who is acting upon what and what time i am influenced by which deity there is no need to understand we can simply engage all these senses which have this so much of analytical understanding here we can simply engage all these senses in service of drishikesha the master of senses immediately the whole thing becomes spiritual and as long as we don't engage these senses in the service of the master of senses rishikesha everything is entangling entangling and everything is suffering everything is botheration everything is frustration everything is perpetual repetition of birth and death a chain of perpetual suffering and as soon as you decide which even a foolish person can decide or a most intelligent person can decide that i want to engage my sense in service to lord which is the most natural inclination or proclivity of the sense to be engaged in service of rishikesha and as soon as that happens when you very uh, desirably with full desire you engage your sense in connection with the lord as soon as the first thing happens in your life is happiness immediately you feel happiness you may not understand why but you will feel that happiness and that happiness is so natural and so so natural that you tend to do it again and again because that is so much pleasing to the self so all of us have to understand this that what is needed in life is to understand only this much that i am suffering and i need to get out of it and the only answer to get out of suffering is to connect with the lord and how to connect with the lord is through the senses the same senses which are entangling you the same senses help you to connect with the lord there is no other way there is no other way to connect with the with the lord the eyes have to be engaged in seeing the lord the tongue has to be engaged in repeating the words of the lord or chant the holy name of the lord the ears have to be engaged in hearing about the lord the praises of the lord the stories of the lord the message of the lord the tongue has to be engaged in relishing the food it is explained when you taste the food that is prasadam automatically the voracious nature of the tongue becomes curbed immediately without even our knowledge you start eating prasadam you will come to know your 
tongue's voracious nature be gets curbed gets controlled so we don't have to um, intellectually analyze everything to understand everything we have to be we can be as simple as possible and perfect our lives that way so we may feel oh it is only 7 days duration and uh, 10th canto such a ecstatic time parshit maharaj had and that was supposed to be going on and on till the end of his life but suddenly uddhav has come in between and he has asked some questions and krishna is going on and on and on explaining the sense and object and activities and analyzing the material elements is it necessary for parshit maharaj to know <laughs> it came to my mind also but the answer that i got within meditation was that unless it is necessary why krishna will tell uddhav and unless it is necessary why shukdev will tell what krishna told uddhav it is necessary that's why it is told that's why we should not just uh, skip this chapter as a boring chapter huh? see in one one shloka there's so much information in translation only is given in translation it is given the sense the object and the deity sense object so eight things are explained eight to the 24 things are only given in one shloka translation imagine so much information is there so it must be important shrimad bhagavatam is a very tailor made time bound arrangement for delivering a person who is in a particular situation by very much realized soul so it cannot be one word extra here it's not possible to have one word extra here it is extremely uh, important understanding there is in every word sometimes we feel oh so many prayers demigods are doing he is doing she is doing kunti is doing so many prayers are going on and on particularly the prayers of vedas oh my god it just goes on and on only but in those prayers there are so many wonderful deep realizations are there of those particular people who are doing those prayers their heart is being expressed because the best expression of heart can be through prayer rest every feeling is important but not as powerful as a prayer a prayer is a very very powerful medium to express our heart with to fullest extent in fullest capacity so we thank lord krishna for having told all this to uddhav our rupa goswami Uh, has picked up all these things and majority of those things are there in upadesha amruta very beautifully placed subject wise intelligently so that our practical spiritual life is guided by them huh? if you read the uh, things spoken by navayogendras all of them are there in upadesha amruta very nicely collaborated and organized so uh, when we become purer and purer and purer we get more and more and more nectar from these kind of things which are so called appearing to be boring at this moment of time but we more become spiritually pure then these things become very appealing meaningful and pertinent to our life so how to engage our five senses mind intelligence ego and also the soul which is transcendental to that beyond that how to how to engage that in service to krishna so a beautiful period is coming now what is that kartik so other times also we engage these things but the lord chooses to give the maximum reward to the activities of connecting the sense to him connecting our sense by our own will to the lord the lord gives unbelievably multiplying benefits when we do it in month of kartik why it is so because lord desire that's all if someone wants to receive 1 rupee from you and gives you 1 crore you can't ask why better take it before asking why <laughs> then you ask why because sometimes uh, rich people have some funny desires right they just want to use their wealth in variety of ways this is a supremely wealthy person supreme lord and if he chooses i love kartik and whoever does anything kartik i love him and i will reward him and if he does something 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 i'll reward him millions of times huh? so 
this is the appropriate time that we should charge ourselves, inspire ourselves, motivate ourselves, prepare ourselves to accept this upcoming month of um, Kartik in a very favorable manner so that we uh, don't start planning our month what we will do on the eve of the month. Huh? It's one week from now. It's enough time, seven days to 24 hours we have enough time to move, meditate and think how I will engage each of my sense in service to the Lord and, and get the maximum benefit much more than last year, much more than previous year of last year so that I progressively get more and more benefits of month of Karthik every year because it comes only after 11 months, it doesn't come after you miss some particular day in a month of Karthik then next time it will come, oh I want to do it better but it will come after 11 months so better to prepare properly, intelligently. This month is specially blessed by the grace of Radharani, whose name is Urjeshwari. We will hear it in this month many, many times by many, many speakers, many, many places. But it is good to hear hundreds of times the same thing. Lord Radharani's name is Urjeshwari and the Urja, Urja is energy, Urjeshwari. And uh, the vrata or the regulations that we take up voluntarily is called as Urjeshwari vrata because the month is named after Damodar in the Vaishnav month there is Keshav, Madhav, Govind like that this month is called Damodar month and name is Damodar but the Adhishthatri Devata is Radharani the presiding personality who gives fruit to these activities done in this month is Radharani and this month is very dear to Radharani and Krishna both. That's why whatever is done in this month, Radharani is sitting there to just flood you with the rewards. And those rewards are not material. Those rewards are not binding to you in the material world for repeated birth and death situation. All the rewards that Radharani gives to anybody for that matter is only spiritual. Durga Devi can give both reactions to you. She will give reaction which will bind you because it's her duty. And if you approach her in a proper consciousness, then she also will reward you with devotion to Radha and Krishna also. She has a capacity. Shiva has capacity. Lord Ganesha has capacity to give us pure devotion to Krishna. But we don't ask. That's why they are doing their duties as per the Lord's order, as per the hierarchy and the situation and job description. This month is a very special month where so many events take place, so many Leelas have taken place. For example, Ras Leela has taken place in this month. It begins only with Ras Leela this month. There is Venu Geet Sang, there is Brahmar Geet Sang, there is Gopi Geet Sang in this month. Lifting of Govardhan Leela has taken place in the month. Govardhan Puja has taken this in this month. Radha Kund and Sham Kund has appeared in this month of Kartik. Arishta Sur is killed in Kartik. Narka Sur is killed in Kartik. Damodar Leela, the famous Leela for which the whole month is famous all over the universe, universes in creation that has taken place. Gopashtami, the celebrated event of handing over big cows to Krishna for grazing has taken place in this month. Bali comes up on this, in this month to, from Sutar Loka to earth to see his planet as per the desire of the Lord and blessing upon him. And there is Bhishma Panchak in this month where five days Vrat is there to perfect our life. Lord Ramchandra also came back to Ayodhya in this month, where lamps are lit on that day. Then in this month only on Imlitala, a place called Imlitala, Radharani was bathed and uh, coronated as Vrindavaneshwari in this month. Krishna was bathed after Govardhan Leela. Govind Kund was formed in this month. Surubi and Airavat bathed Krishna after Govardhan Leela. So many things have happened. And these are like, you know, you can say main, main things which we are enumerating. But all those things crawling, you know, going to Goshala and skating on the abdomen with the mixture of cow dung and cow urine and talking broken words, learning to walk, stealing butter, beginning to steal butter from his own house, then going out and stealing butter, then he could stand on his own feet and go out. All those things have taken place here. All Makanchori, everything has taken place in this month. 
because very logical and natural krishna was born in the month of august somewhere and this is something october november so two three months he starts crawling he is interacting with mother and then next year he is one year three months and the next year he is two year two year three months his naughtiness goes on increasing <laughs> so such a such a sweet month actually which actually uh, satisfies the soul the need of the soul is to relish the activities of krishna and that need is completely and wonderfully and nicely fulfilled in this month this month is uh, purest of all purifiers most glorious of all very dear to krishna and radha and is very uh, full of bhakta vatsalya the love that radha and krishna have for their devotees it is magnified in this month in the form of expression of love and rewarding the devotees there are huge results achieved for doing small small things for example if you read shrimad bhagavatam even one verse per day in this month you will every single time achieve the benefit of reading all the 18 puranas now i was just analyzing what does that mean actually is it on paper some record is kept or what is happening it is it is the the realization that you may get after reading 18 puranas you will get by reading one bhagavatam verse in this month what do you expect by reading bhagavatam verse in this month that you will get some realization from within to per, act, act upon in your life right so that kind of benefit will be available it's not theoretical benefit of reading you don't get a degree certificate in the end of month by reading one shloka of bhagavatam uh, certificate of 18 puranas being read has come to you it's not like that it's all within it is all external it's not external it is all within okay effect of performing kartik vad it is explained that it lasts for 100 lifetimes hari bhakti vilas explains skanda puran explains said it lasts for 100 lifetimes but actually is not true it lasts forever whatever you do spiritually always lasts forever so how can it last only for 100 100 lifetimes and what you do in kartik is multiples of multiples of time benefit that also is eternal all other vratas done previously this is very important huh? why we have to perform a particular vrat in this month performing kartik vrat is a must for any human being because as explanation given if you do not do any vrat in kartik then whatever vratas you have done in the previous life previous years of your life becomes nullified if kartik vrat is not performed and all the pious activities amassed by the previous pious activities that you have done are all reduced to ashes if you don't do kartik vrat and all that you have done in the beginning before kartik bears unlimited amount of fruits if you do kartik vrat so it is intelligent to give meaning to all that you have done before by performing kartik vrat even those will be meaningful and the kartik itself will be add your benefit so everything is beneficial that's why i'm telling all my brothers and sisters and family members that take some small vrat in kartik because they all go to this one that one and do so many things and so many vratas very sincerely so to make them get the benefit of those vratas also we have to inspire them to tell them that chant for 10 minutes hari krishna maha mantra or anything for that matter or put water in tulsi for this month every single morning study of the vedas becomes futile if you one doesn't perform kartik vrata charity japa tapasya becomes fruitless shraddha agni hotra yagya homa havana everything becomes useless if one doesn't perform kartik vrata the skanda puran says that the performer of kartik vrata is considered nahi the one who doesn't perform kartik vrata is considered the lowest of mankind killer of parents and killer of brahmins automatically without killing them also so why this all is told tell me krishna will reject that person who will not do kartik vrata why it is all this in told in a positive and negative way so that we should do the vrata when such things are told we may be prompted maybe out of fear but not out of fear we should be inspired we should be out of uh, inspired out of the the great spiritual benefit that are going to be achieved by us and the what is the biggest spiritual benefit that will achieve by kartik vrata is the pleasure of radha and krishna more than ascending into swarga and amassing punya karmas and this and that the most 
powerful benefit of performing Kartik Vrata is guaranteed pleasure of Radha and Krishna, which is essential aspect of advancement in spiritual life. So we should not get motivated by getting the benefit of Ashwamedha Yagya, getting the benefit of 100 Rajasu Yagya and getting this benefit. All these are material benefits, they will, even if they come to you, they will have to be left behind here only the benefits because when you go up in the spiritual world, you cannot carry any material benefits with you. So what is the point of amassing all the material benefits? Or so called spiritual benefits which are going to remain in material world only. We have to focus ourselves to always think that we need to carry those pleasures with uh, experiences or benefits with us which can be taken, us, taken with us to spiritual world. And those are always connected to the pleasure of the Lord, Radharani and devotees. These benefits always go with you. Rest all stays here only. But let us not waste our time in amassing those which stay here only. Damo Dharam Prapadyeham Sri Radha Ramanam Prabhu Prabhavada Yasat Tatpreshtaha Kartika Sevito Bhavet. I take shelter of Damodar who is dear to Radharani. Under Radha's influence, we can serve the dearmost month of Kartik. No Vrat is equal to Kartik. No yoga, no scripture explains about that anything is equal to Vrat of Kartik. By following Kartik Vrat, the ancestors suffering in hell, they get delivered. So those who are uh, haunted by Pitru Dosha, they must do Kartik Vrat. It is said that simply by performing Kartik Vrat, one gets a status of being a Vaishnava. Who never performed Vrat in the past, any Shraddha, any Puja, any Yajna will get a status of being Vaishnava. He will definitely re receive liberation, which is not so important for devotees, but, but he will get residence in Vaikuntha with the Lord. Even if one performs Rangoli in the temple of Vishnu, one receives spiritual effulgence and attraction to the Lord. Offering, offering Bhoga in Kartik to Lord relieves all kinds of sufferings in the reign of 14 Indras in the time duration of 14 Indras, all sufferings will be mitigated simply by offering food items with love and devotion to Lord Krishna in this month. Just being awake in the morning in front of the Lord, chanting His holy name in the morning, just being awake, yields lot of spiritual benefits which are difficult to achieve otherwise. So, <clears throat> there is on and on. The highest benefit of this month is having Sravanam Kirtanam for Krishna. Hearing about Krishna and chanting the name of Krishna or glories of Krishna. It will not only uplift us, it will uplift many generations of our life if we do Sravanam Kirtanam about Krishna in this month. It is said Dhruva attained Vishnu by worshipping him in Mathura in the month of Kartik. Whatever we read, it was not enlisted in the list of happening in the happenings in the month of Kartik. But Dhruva has attained his perfection, darshan of the Lord by performing all that. One of the six months was Kartik month. Please understand. So Kartik in short is the great grand reduction sale of Sri Krishna. Hare Krishna. Always everybody is looking after in Diwali time, na? great grand reduction sale. Everything is 50%, 25%, take one, take four, take four at home. So this is our spiritual sale. So coming to the basic point, what we should do? There are some simple things I have noted down. What we can simply do is wake up in Brahma Murta. At least wake up before one, one hour of sunrise. Do Nam Japa, sing Kirtan, a possible dance in Mangal Arati. Definitely without fail, please do Vaishnava Seva in this month. Feed the Vaishnavas, Mahap, the Prasadam. Please serve the cows. Definitely without fail, don't, don't fail to hear Krishna Lila in this month. You can say one day, once, once a day I'll read one pastime or hear one pastime by somebody's recordings. But be in touch with Krishna Lila throughout this month. Do not fail to do duty worship in this month. And the easiest way of duty worship is what? In this month, offer the lamp. Another important thing this month is Dham Vas. You go to the holy place. It could be Nasik close by. It could be Ban Ganga over close by here. It could come. You could come and uh, spend time here. Mandir Vas. 
is also dham was mandir was is vaikunta was so do not fail to visit holy places either the temple of the lord or the close by holy place and take bath in the holy river there chanting the holy name of the lord don't fail don't forget to do charity in this month and the charities are in different different modes but do charity in transcendental mode that is donate for direct service to krishna and his devotees and for devotional projects rather than some philanthropic items please chant shikshashtakam gajendra moksha bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam in this month these are like prescribed items even you chant shikshashtakam every day in this month was great power in the last chapter of chaitanya charitamrita it is said one who recites chaitanya uh, shikshashtakam chaitanya shikshashtakam only by reciting this prayer of eight verses eight uh, groups of four whatever stanzas are there one will attain the kingdom of lord that is the benefit explained in the last chapter of chaitanya charitamrita gajendra moksha is another powerful set of shlokas which gajendra is praying to lord vishnu when he was in most difficult situations so these are the like kunti's prayers prayers offered by dhruva to the lord prallad offering prayer to the lord so many prayers are there. these prayers if we chant in this month it is explained as great benefit of spiritual realization will be achieved and not least the greatest item that we do that we should take a take a vow that i will offer minimum one lamb to the lord every single day because in front of one ghee lamb of kartik whatever is defined as sin no sin can stand in front of the light of the one ghee lamp of kartik month now we may say people are doing tapasya people are doing fastings and they staying in himalayas giving up their family and wealth and opulences and material happiness physical happiness so much happiness they have given up everything and years after years after years they are staying in the forest sacrificing everything and they don't get it seems purana has explained that don't even get to see one ray coming from 20 nails of lord krishna's body not even one ray what to speak of the nail what to speak of the feet that has the nail what to speak of the person that has the feet is everything is impossible and rare but all these things are made into laguta krita ha huh? matlab they become completely insignificant in front of one lamp of kartik because one lamp of kartik pleases lord krishna and radharani so much that they fall in love with the devotee the demigod starts staying in the body of that devotee one who offers lamp to the lord in this month so what is important is just come to the temple you don't have to have to spend for the lamp or a wick or ghee for that you know you will get ready made ghee lamp over here they also will light for light it for you even one who lights that lamp for you keeps getting benefit of performing ashwamedh yagya one after another <laughs> that's also explained this given in hari bhakti vilas so you can see when lord wants to bestow unlimited blessing upon us how does he bestow for every smallest thing in connection with that activity also is blessed so it is only foolishness not to take benefit of that suppose you are traveling in the train sometimes more than maybe one and a half days sometimes so maybe you will miss the lamp offering time please offer the lamp in the mind in the train or in the flight but do not miss the opportunity of offering in the mind at least that kind of benefit is there because in kali yuga when you do some service in the mind it is registered and it is given benefit of it is rewarded bad things if you think in mind it may not be punished we may not be punished for that but good things or any service to the lord we do in the mind in meditation it will be rewarded by the lord so do not be miserly in thinking in offering a golden lamp studded with diamonds and offering the purest of padmaganda cows ghee in the lamp and lighting that lamp and offering the lord with the best of heartfelt feelings don't forget to do that it is said along with pleasure of the lord you will achieve wealth health fame progeny and success in life by offering the lamp of the lord in the month of kartik no one will take birth in the world again in bhavaloka in this material world one who offers lamp to kartik in the month of kartik to lord the mother sins of millions of kalpa will be destroyed instantly 
when we offer first lamp to the Lord in the month of Kartik. The light of the lamp, whatever you have offered, you may not have, you know, how much of the candle power you have offered, how much of light it has created. You may not calculate that. But all that is accounted by some demigod there. And the collective light of all the lamps you have offered in your life in the month of Kartik will lead your way back to Godhead when you are leaving this world. This is not beautiful. So beautiful. That means you have offered the lamp, some light it has created and after the lamp is finished, light is vanished. But all that light is, is registered by somebody and all the collections of lights that you have created by all the lamps that you have offered to the Lord will light the way back to Godhead when you are going back to Godhead. Haribo! If you light Akhanda Deep in this month, huh? suppose you on the, on the night of uh, Sharad Purnima, from 12 onwards you light a lamp and you keep on pouring ghee in that and you keep it lit for all 30 days in front of the Lord. It's possible, huh? it's not impossible, we have done that. So, uh, Pradipta Tejasvi Vivan will come from Goloka and will take you back to Godhead in the end. So, anyway, there are many stories. Simple guidance is please take some breath in Kartik. Very important. Do not miss this opportunity. This is a good time, one week before, to inspire ourselves. But there are two kinds of brathas. One is called as Vidhi Vrata and one is called Nished Vrata. That means in Nished Vrata we will say, I will not get up after 6 o'clock. This is Nished Vrata. I will not take sweets. I will not eat after 7 o'clock in the evening. Or I will not, whatever. Whatever I will not do or like not to do. I will not sleep on the soft cushion in this month. This is called Nished Vrata. And Vidhi Vrata means I will chant one round extra. I will read one Bhagavatam Shloka every day. I will offer morning, evening, one, one lamp to the Lord, irrespective of temple offerings and temple programs. I will offer at my home, whatever. I will not get up later than five o'clock in the morning. Huh? But one Nished Vrata we should all take. You must be, any, any guess what I am going to say now? Please do not look into mobile when you chant your 16 rounds. This is the biggest, biggest roga, biggest disease of this age. There is something called as mobile vrata. Mobile, mobile chanting. That means we think that mobile chanting means I am walking and chanting. It's not mobile chanting means not that. It's a new terminology. That means I have a hand in mobile in hand and I have bead bag in another hand and I keep looking only in mobile and I keep moving beads. That is a new kind of chanting has come up. So this is a good month to express and I will tell you it is such a difficult thing to give up mobile during chanting. And if you are able to do that, you will get lot of benefit because you have done so much sacrifice. <laughs> so, apart from joke, take it seriously and take it a note, make it a note that I will not look into mobile till I finish my 16 rounds. And if you have to look into mobile after the day starts, better get up in the morning and finish all your rounds before it is 7.30 or 8 o'clock. So that then you are free to attend your business calls and everything. But it is the biggest distraction. Whatever number of vows we take and if we keep looking in the mobile while chanting Hare Krishna, then I think everybody, every vow will get nullified because it has no potency only. So let us take this decision. I am telling all friends of mine, please give up this touching mobile, working on mobile during the chanting of Hare Krishna. Begin with month of Karthik and continue after that also. Life long. It is a very beautiful vow that we will take. So I thought that as it is a month of Karthik coming, we should definitely discuss one pastime of the Lord which has taken place in this month. So I thought we will discuss appearance of Radha Kund and Sham Kund in this month. Hari Bol. So <clears throat> Radha Kund is, as per Rupa Goswami, is the most, the highest of all uh, spiritual abodes is called as Radha Kund and Sham Kund. Rupa Goswami says the goal of life is to attain residence at the banks of Radha Kund, ultimately in the end of life or wherever in the life. So that kind of uh, holy place has been created in this month. So uh, I will not go on elaborately describing it, it will take hours and hours together for describing this one pastime. But 
Aristasur priest from Bengal, from Bangladesh, he was residing over there. He was subdued by Kamsa and brought to his servant, servant's position. He came down to stay in um, Mathura and then one day he, called, he was called by Kamsa and said, you go and you kill Krishna. And they were discussing who is Krishna, how he looks and everything. Both of them were called Arishta and Keshi. Arishta was sent first. And that day it was uh, evening time and Krishna was uh, about to, he was meditating on a long Ras Lila pastime at that area, which was called that time as Arishta 1 because Arishta Sur was also residing there for some time. So he played his flute to call the gopis, to invite them for Ras Lila and suddenly he started hearing big cries of all ladies and gents. So he was wondering what happened. It was huge, it's like big brick cry. Life-threatening cries because Arishtasur was coming. Arishtasur started coming towards Krishna and you know, in brief I'll tell you what all atrocities he created. Which is, if today whatever bomb blasts are taking place are all insignificant compared to what atrocities these demons created. When he came, his every foot, he had four feet, every foot was so much heavily thumped on the ground that underground water sources were coming out as fountains. I mean, destruction. It's not just like you know, beautifying the whole thing. <laughs> so all, every step was creating such kind of water sources, destruction. He passed so much in urine that it, it created reverse in Brajbhumi of his urine, just to create disgust. He passed so much stool, there are mountains of stool he created on the way coming back. His hump and his tail was in the sky and he was scattering all the clouds here and there. His, his breath was like hurricane. It was destroying all the trees and the way he was roaring and the way he was creating atrocity from all heights and from the lake side, from urine and stool side, from the clouds and from the breathing, many many gopis aborted their babies. They were embracing trees, calling Krishna but they lost their babies. Such kind of fear, confusion, uncertainty was created by him. So then he came. And Krishna was uh, some of his friends, you know. And he stood with one hand on the shoulder of his friend and with one cross-legged and he was casually. And he said, come on, get me. Sarishasur got very angry that I am such a big, fearsome personality. He is a small boy standing so casually and smiling and laughing and making others laugh looking at me and challenging me, come and get me. So he attacked Krishna. And Krishna didn't even budge by his attack. He held his legs and swirled him and smashed him on the ground. Then Krishna pushed him two, two miles. It is said when Krishna pushed him first time, 18 miles he pushed him away. Then Arishtasur pushed him, pushed Krishna two miles away. And that's how the war began. Everybody was, Krishna was all time laughing during this war to keep confidence in, in the Gowalwal. All the coward boys also were laughing and that was very irritating to the demon. You know, you can imagine, you know, you can, he's attacking with full force and anger. And somebody is laughing and laughing and laughing. So Krishna particularly, purposely did that. And then finally, Krishna uprooted his horns and stabbed his body with the horns. And finally he lifted in the sky and whirled him so much that he passed urine and stool in the sky itself and he finally died. And I told you in just two minutes. But this went on for a couple of hours. A fierce war. Demigods were watching on the sky. Coming out of the clouds, coming in the clouds. You know why? When Krishna was about to be looking as winning, they would come out of the sky. I mean clouds. And when Krishna appeared to be losing in, in a Leela, they would hide again. The, because you know, if suppose Krishna is defeated and Arishasur wins and while fighting, Arishasur has seen the demigods and after winning over Krishna, they will go to demigods and destroy him. So demigods always have been in and out clouds when Krishna's fight is going on. So finally, it's a fierce war ended and Arishtasur was killed. Krishna came, because already he had played flute, so gopis were anyway coming, they came and he thought that they will glorify him, they will appreciate him, they will say Jai Jai, Dhanyavad, Dhanyavad and Jai Vad. But they said, no, we will not talk to you. What they said? Tatastu Radhika Tyakto Lalita Mohanas Tada 
अस्माकम नैव संसर्गो विमोचनम वृषहत्या समन्वित सेड यू हैव बीन कंटेमिनेटेड बाय द ग्रेटेस्ट सिन ऑफ किलिंग गो वंश इज नो 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 ही वॉज अ बुल ही वॉज अ डीमन ऑल दो ही वॉज इन फॉर्म अ बुल सर वी डोंट नो ऑल दैट वी वी बिलीव दैट धर्म इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय वृषभ दैट इज बुल एंड यू हैव किल्ड द किल द वृषभ so it's like puzzling discussion i cares killed him to save you and you are saying you have been filled with sin now anyway i accepted what what to do with the sin so they said that radhika and lalita and gopi said that you have to go to all the holy places in the whole creation take bath and then we will consider you as purified but krishna said that if i go everywhere it is a long distance first of all it will take time and second thing you will not believe that i have taken bath there if i say i took bath here i took bath there there so you may say after coming back we don't believe so instead of doing all that i will call all the holy places here only and in front of your eyes i will take bath that means you have to be convinced that i did that so all the holy places of the whole universe there supposed to be 68000 holy places they all came down there and krishna thumped his right foot on the ground in one place it is said he thumped his foot on the ground and he created the pond in other side it is said there was already a footprint of arista and that krishna expanded and all the holy places appeared and they powered uh, showered their waters in them and krishna said do you see do you see see all the holy places so radharani and gopi said no no we don't see anything it's all leela so create fun so all the holy places entered the water and radharani said i am not saying anything so then all the holy places one by one came and greeted radharani see it is mentioned here pro uchuhu matlab pro chuhu krutanjali puta folding their hands anjali means like this folding their hands pro chuhu they started speaking how what they started speaking lavanabdir asmi i am the ocean of salt that we what we have here our our ocean then somebody said i am shirabdir asmi i am the shir sagara and somebody said shunuta mara dirgika asmi that holy name holy place said i am that shonopi shon nadi said i am shon nadi sindur aham asmi i am sindhu nadi bhavami tamra parni cha i am tamra parni river pushkaram aham cha saraswati cha so pushkar said i am pushkar and saraswati said i am saraswati river godavari ravisuta sharayu hu who is ravisuta who is ravisuta yamuna devi she is daughter of ravi lord surya godavari ravisuta sharayuhu prayago revasmi reva nadi prayag dham sharayu river jamuna river godavari river they introduce themselves to radharani paschatam jala kuruta pratitim what they are saying please look at our waters that we are putting into this pond pond created by lord krishna paschata please see and they kuruta pratitim pratiti karlo kya kehte hain usko assure yourself convince yourself it is us only who is saying all this thing vishwana chakravarti pad is saying into his sararthini darshini tika on bhagavatam huh? so thus divya saram then then what happened then krishna took bath in that and apparently as per the gopi's instruction washed off the sins of killing the bull and he came happily and then he told radharani that see actually uh, i have been washed off now with the sin but you are contaminated with equally powerful sin because you sided with the demon you took his side and fought with me for no reason so because you sided with the demon you are also contaminated with the same sin so better you also take bath in all the holy places it is said divyam sarha prakatitam ghatika dvayena in two ghatika huh? radharani created a beautiful pond by breaking her bangles and creating a hole tabhir vilokya sarasam smrate sma krishna again vishnu chakravarti pad is giving this beautiful shloka in his tika in in short time lining up from manasi ganga they filled up that water kund and they were sweating and they were perspiring and it is like get, getting into the middle of the night actually by that time because you can see first krishna having fight with this one then all the holy places coming then shamkund creation and then they coming and krishna inspiring them to create their own kunda because radharani said that we will not take bath in your kunda why why is that 
बिकॉज अस्माकम नैव संसर्गो विमोचनम वृषहत्या समन्वित द संसर्ग ऑफ द पाप ऑफ किलिंग दैट बुल इज देयर इन दैट वॉटर सो वी विल वी आर नॉट फूल्स वी विल नेवर एंटर इन दैट वॉटर टू कंटेमिनेट अवर सेल्फ इंस्टेड ऑफ गेटिंग प्योरीफाइड अवर सेल्फ सो वील क्रिएट अवर ओन कुंड and then they were trying but the kunda was not getting fulfilled they created the kunda and on krishna's instruction all the holy places were residing little bit higher in the sky and krishna had told him to wait and then krishna said why are you taking so much trouble just just accept their service they are waiting and then he signaled the chief of them chief of the person and four of them they came down and they pleaded with on the knees with folded hand to shrimati radharani Oh dear Radha Rani, oh merciful Radha Rani, please accept our service. We are very eager. After a long time, we have got entrance in the holy place of Vrindavan Dham. And please, without serving you, we don't want to go from here. Please allow us to serve you. So the most merciful Karuna Sagar Radha Rani finally accepted, and she said, "Agachata iti, please come now." So they all entered in her pond. and that pond was filled with all the holy places which had come to fill the krishna's pond and radha tatha nannan neti jagat yasmat tatva kund niram uru govardhan patakatkam so krishna said that your kunda your water of the kunda is liquid form of your love it is not water it is liquid radha prem krishna announced while the kund is being formed and he said this kunda will be as dear as you to me see the number of benedictions first he said it is radha rani's liquid prema not waters second he said the kund will be as dear as you to me and third he said whoever will take bath in this kunda will be as dear as you are to me fourth thing he said that he will develop the love i have for you he will develop for you one who take bath and then he said by taking bath in radha kund whatever you have love for me that love will be implanted in the heart of a person who is taking bath in radha kund so these are amount uh, one after another benedictions krishna gave and he said i will take come to take bath every day over here and perform my sweet pastimes over here then radha rani said that i will also come and take bath in your kund every day so he said but this is contaminated with uh, sin of agasur i mean uh, aristasur she so said even if you kill 100 more bulls like this i will still keep coming every single day to take bath in radha kund in sham kund so at 11:48 am every day after taking bath in uh, kusum sarovar she comes there at 11 o'clock she goes to kusum sarovar with her sakhis and then she comes to today's panch pandav ghat that time panch pandav ghat not there it appeared later on because panch pandav was performed uh, tapasya at the banks of shamukund in the form of trees that is why today it is called panch pandav ghat at that ghat at 11:48 am she comes and takes bath then she comes to the opposite ghat called pashakela ghat where she she plays chess with krishna uh, krishna apparently defeats her in all kinds of other pastimes on the ground but she defeats krishna in pashakela that is chosar jut krida defeats him at the bank of shamukund so this beautiful place chaitanya mahaprabhu has revealed ha huh? sarva gopi hoite radha krishna ra priyasi taichya radha kunda priya priya ra sarasi so chaitanya mahaprabhu glorified radha kund after meditating at the uh, at the tamal tala at the bank of radha sham kund he saw in his darshan sham kund and radha kund and then he opened his eyes he saw two small puddles which were like almost extinguished he jumped in those puddles and chanted hari bol hari bol everybody all brijwasis were amazed to see the ecstasy in this golden effulgent personality in taking bath in small puddles and he declared these are radha kund and sham kund and then he glorified that this kund is very dear to radha and krishna and krishna has given benedictions and radha has given benedictions so then he glorified it by chanting the various mantras so thus this beautiful place was created in the middle of the night at the 12 o'clock in the midnight today also on bahulashtami that is in the next paksha the first paksha of this month will be ending with amavasya that is diwali and then bali pratipada and bhavis 
and the next particular um, bright moon fortnight in that the ashtami comes where gopa ashtami is there and i think uh, in the first half radha kund appearance take place i think so in the first half when the ashtami comes now on 13th there will be purnima 14th there will be prathama 14th 15th 16th 17th 18th 19th 20th 21 22 23 on 23rd mostly radha kund appearance will be there and even today at the middle of the night when the time comes of appearance of radha kund milk comes out of radha kund as springs from water and the reason behind is the shir sagar part of it becomes activated people have seen huh? people have seen the milk springs coming out and as soon as they see the milk spring they are waiting for the whole evening there they celebrate by lighting and singing songs and doing boating and everything and when the milk comes they jump in the water and take bath that is the ceremony millions of people come in the middle of the night and is the most beautiful darshan of radha kund and sham kund you can ever get and one more thing is there which i forgot to tell you that um one minute let me have you have to see the notes somewhere where radha rani what happened was krishna said when radha kund was created he gave so many benediction he said now that you have created a beautiful kund no one will take bath in my kund which is contaminated with go with the pap huh? as i read na radha tata nanan neti nobody will take bath nan nan na three times he said nan nan na iti jagat yasmatva kund niram uru go vadha patakatam my kund is samprukta saturated with the sin of killing cow so who will take bath in my kund so radha said i will not let this happen so she stroked the connection between the two there was a land in between two right that means something like bridge you can say there was no bridge before but now one side the kund is created there is some land in between another kund is created or whatever the land is in between becomes a bridge so she struck that bridge with her bangle and it broke and radha kund water gushed in sham kund sham kund water gushed in radha kund so this is how she connected the two and made it today also the both the kundas connected another reason so it is explained that there are many versions of the story that when radha rani was creating her kunda and she was unable to fill the kunda and krishna was pleading 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 and she was not listening to him so he broke that bridge in between and let all the water from radha kund sham kund to flow in radha kund another uh, leela all the demigods all those dev- devatas and the holy tirthas they entered the water and radha rani broke it another thing it is said that in other past time that both the kundas flooded and met each other how it flooded out of love radha and krishna so even um, remembering radha kund every day is a very auspicious activity in your prayers in your meditation whenever you are praying to krishna to chanting hare krishna please remember radha kund sham kund every day it takes nothing actually huh? every single day when you chant you can offer your prayers to radha kund because radha kund when there is a memory of radha kund you are at the bank of radha kund radha kund is in your heart the most auspicious feeling that you can create or you can make yourself most auspicious by remembering radha kund and if one chant one round mentally being at radha kund or physically being at radha kund one round will be benefited by millions of rounds chanting millions of rounds at one time so whatever time we get at the bank of radha kund is rewarded millions of times when you do the same activity at other places in the world so you are a devotee there also here also but the place is so powerful it is said radha kund is filled with mercy of radha rani one time radha rani was just walking at the banks of radha kund and something struck her feet so she asked lalita what is it so lalita said it is a she pig which died yesterday so radha said just take her in our parshad and instantly that dead she pig was allowed entrance in the closed entourage of radha rani why this story is told to make us understand 
कि दिस काइंड ऑफ अनबिलीवेबल मर्सी इज अवेलेबल फ्रॉम राधा रानी एट द बैंक्स ऑफ राधा कुंड राधा रानी इज कॉन्स्टेंटली रेडी टू ब्रेक द बिग क्लाउड ऑफ मर्सी एज शावर्स ऑन ऑल ऑफ अस ऑल द टाइम what stops us from taking that cloud burst is only our consciousness as soon as your consciousness becomes favorable the cloud burst of radha rani's mercy is going to fall upon us and we are going to get completely drowned by her mercy she is going to accept us as our own so that's why we go to radha kund to become her own to become a person owned by her sheltered by her accepted by her as her own that's why all the acharyas all the acharyas of all the sampraday they have come and performed their bhajan at the bank of radha kund so radha kund is like a like a big mall of holy places all the directions you go you have this maharaj's baitak that maharaj's baitak lalita kund there was also ashta kund there before radha kund was created sham kund was created all sakhis created their kundas of that today lalita kund is remaining there and in my whole reading i could not find a place which can relieve you of the sin of garba path lalita kund is the place if you take bath in lalita kund you will be uh, along with seven other killings the garba path killing also will be relieved by taking bath in lalita kund i just don't declare it otherwise because people will you know what they will do but point to suffice to say that all our deities when aurangzeb attacked all our deities have stayed at the bank of radha kund that's why you have sapta devalayas at the bank of radha kund you have gopal vatta go swami krishna das kavitas go swami you will go on naming all of them have sat and performed their bhajan so it is auspicious and more auspicious and more auspicious and more auspicious raghunath das go swami performed his antim bhajan at the bank of radha kund janva devi came to meet raghunath das go swami at the bank of radha kund stayed there had her private place to take bath called janva baitak and you can go on and go on it will take 3 days to visit those places and narrate their past times at the bank of radha kund so suffice to say if you are unable to go there at least we should meditate on radha kund every day and keep our consciousness at the banks of radha kund so radha rani's mercy will be always upon us hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare thank you all of you for helping me to remind myself of kartik vrat hare krishna thank you very much Hare Krishna dear devotees there is an announcement from Geeta Champions League